528 BC, Gautama Siddharth attained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree at Bodhgaya. It is here that he became a Buddha. For one billion Buddhists in the world today, there is no place more sacred than Bodhgaya in Bihar. The 7th century pilgrim from China, Xuanzang, described Bodhgaya as the center of the Buddhist world. For the followers of the Buddha from around the world, it remains the center till today. I've traveled to caves, I've traveled to temples uh, in many different countries and there's a feeling among the senior monks, this is the time for us to pray, to come together back to Bodhgaya. Because this is the sacred place, the most sacred place on earth. But it's also the only stupa that is ancient and contains Buddha relics that's not been opened. Today, so many thousands and thousands and thousands of people are coming back to the Mahabodhi. The people are coming to pay homage to a temple in a religious tradition which has not changed in over 1400 years. This is the center of the world. This is the center of the world peace. The place where the message of non-violence was delivered to the whole world. And I think there is no other place that is so much sacred to us than this place. And as you all know, the previous Buddhas attained their awakening here under the sacred Bodhi tree. And the future Buddhas will also awaken under this sacred Bodhi tree. So the power and the blessings of this land are truly great and cannot be forgotten. In a vast country like India, one in six of the visitors to India come to Bodhgaya. So you can imagine what's happening. If you spend half an hour under the Bodhi tree, you will see Buddhists from all over the world, practicing in their unique way. Bihar state, uh, of course, has so many sacred sites in it. There's Nalanda, there's Rajgir, there's Vaishali, and of course, of utmost importance is Bodhgaya. So Bihar has a place to a very important role for the Buddhist world and for the message of peace for the world. The Buddhist heritage of Bihar is so rich that it staggers the mind. Not only did the Buddha gain enlightenment here, but the major developments in Buddhism also took place in Bihar. The vast Buddhist universities at Nalanda, Udantpuri and Vikramshila had hundreds of teachers and students. They came from across India and from the many countries of Asia that had embraced Buddhism. The greatest of these was at Nalanda. Here, there was a spirit of vibrant intellectual thought, a climate of discussion and debate. One of the most important universities in the world was developed not in the medieval West, 
but right here in India. And here I'm referring to the university consortium of Nalanda, Vikramashila, Somapura, Odantapuri. All of these various universities were instrumental in producing people who were capable of understanding and articulating what it means to have universal knowledge. Knowledge that's applicable across cultures and across times. The great teachers of the Nalanda University are worshipped till today, all the way from Tibet till Kalmykia in Europe. So all Tibetan tradition, you see, come from each different tradition. They are original sort of masters, all come from Nalanda. So I usually used to describe Tibetan Buddhist tradition is a pure lineage of Nalanda tradition. What a place Nalanda must have been in ancient times. And what a region Bihar must have been. According to the writings of ancient travellers, Bihar then was probably the most flourishing region in the world. Patna was six times the size of Rome and had more international visitors than any other city anywhere. Vikramshila was one of the largest and most significant Buddhist universities in Bihar. It had more than a hundred teachers and almost a thousand students. The historic city of Rajgir has numerous remains which reflect the grandeur of this ancient capital of Magadha. The Buddha is said to have visited Rajgir three times. The Japanese Shanti Stupa made here commemorates the place where the first great Buddhist council was held. The prosperous city of Vaishali is said to also have been visited three times by the Buddha. It is here that the Buddha announced his approaching Parinirvana. The stupa and Ashoka pillar at Vaishali commemorate the place where the second great Buddhist council was held. Recent excavations at Telhara have revealed the site of an ancient Buddhist monastery. Beautiful seals and sculptures have been found here. Indeed, the land of Bihar seems to have a vast and unending treasure of history, buried under the surface, everywhere. Bihar was the center of the Buddhist world in ancient times. It still is. According to a Times of India report, over 20 million tourists visited the state of Bihar in 2012. Millions more wish to come every month. They do not even require much infrastructure as the land of Bihar is sacred to them. With the further development of tourism infrastructure, Bihar is poised for a great boom in tourist arrivals.